So I've been playing the original Elden Ring. And what do I mean by that you ask? Well, I'm talking about the game as it comes on disc, without any update patches applied. And there are more changes from the version we know today than I was originally expecting. For example, did you know that in the base version of the game, when you meet Rogier at the Stormville Castle, he actually sells you Ashes of War style sorceries. These are sorceries that you can use on your weapon rather than a staff. For example, you can apply the glintstone pebble to a sword, although the range is absolute shite, and I say that politely. Okay, so how did I do it? Well, quite simply really, I installed Elder Ring on my PlayStation 5, disconnected from the internet, so it didn't apply any of the updates. And with the game installed, I created a new character, Jeebus, to journey amongst the lands between, and find out what was in the original, non-updated version of the game. As the game gets underway, you'll mainly notice the HUD is more akin to how it was in the network test, and it doesn't look as fancy as the version that came out when the game was first updated. When meeting Ghost Guy on the chair, he completely ignores me, whereas in all the versions I've played, I'm pretty sure he grumbles, as you can see on this 1.04 patch version on the Xbox Series X. For anyone interested going through the tutorial area, I'm pretty sure the Soldier of Godric is actually impossible to beat in this version of the game. He's clearly been massively nerfed since. The next thing that I noticed was that the finger severer for the multiplayer looked noticeably different. As I started to make my way into the open world, I didn't notice any massive changes in frame rate from the more recent versions, but then I have no way of actually testing out all those kinds of stats at all, to be honest. Now, I don't know what it was like in the network test, as I only got to play an hour of it, but the smithing stones, or smithing stones, however you'd like to pronounce it, in the base version are classed as smithing stone shards and large smithing stones, etc, etc, rather than calling them all smithing stones and giving a numerical value like in all the updated versions of Elden Ring. Kale's shop is different in the base version of the game too. For example, he sells a horse crest wooden shield that I don't think is in any of the updated versions of the game. As I wanted to get through this quite quickly, I wanted to be cheeky and use the ice rind hatchet for the hoarfrost stomp, but it doesn't seem to exist as it's not in the base version of the game. However, the hoarfrost stomp ash of war is where it's supposed to be, even though it's actually called the hoarfrost step in this version. You'll notice there are some slight changes to the thumbnails of the weapon arts and stuff. Again, I'm guessing they're similar to how they were in the network test. Of course, Jeebus decided to maiden himself up and there weren't any specific changes that I noticed with the scene with Melina. When you meet Rani, she gives you the Wraith Calling Bell, although the game soon refers to it as a Spirit Caller's Bell. And as a note, when I went to check, I couldn't find the Wraith Summoning Bell. Instead, I was rewarded with a ceremonial pot. Thanks, game. Get into Stormhill's shack. Instead of picking up a stone sword key from the corpse nearby, you get sleep arrows in the original base version. Everything conversation-wise with Roderica is the same, even though Jeebus looked bored as hell. I managed to take on Margit and the shackle seems to work the same, and clearly the Hoarfrost step, as it is in this game, is overpowered to heck and makes short work of Margit. Here's a few other things I've noticed. Sacred Tears are actually called Flask Tears in the base version. The Finger Reader on the Collapsed Bridge is in a different place, although she still wants you to give her your fingers. When I got to the Liernia Lake Shore, there is a campfire, but no merchant. Maybe he's off restocking, I don't know. Runes have a different name in the base version. For example, some names include the Pauper's Rune and Fringe Folk's Rune. At the Round Table Hole, the Twin Maiden Husks only have two items for sale, the White and Blue Cypher Rings, which are not really helpful considering you can't go online. What a rubbish shop. The glitch on the Knight Calvary doesn't seem to work. The Tibia Marina is called the Bone Beckoner Marina, and Patches is still a little bitch, who actually tried to walk away from me. Meeting Galvary, his wizardry is so powerful, he's found a way to keep seated without the need of a chair. He does appear to be a little uncomfortable though, if you ask me. One note is when you meet Alexander, if you end up killing him, you don't get the Warrior Jar Shard Talisman. Instead, in the base game, you get Alexander's core. It's not a talisman though, so at the moment I'm not sure what you can do with it. It's referred to as a surrogate soul. Those are the main things I've noticed thus far. If seeing more of this type of stuff interests you, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to make more. 
I've been tempted to play through more as there might be a lot more considerable changes as you progress in the game, and there's only one way to find out. If I do, I'll probably do a lot of it via live stream, so it'd be great if you'd come and join me. And no doubt, I'll be raging even if I'm trying to cheese my way through, just to see the differences. That's it pretty much, but before you go away, please like the video, subscribe, and say how much you hate me in the comments. Now, you can go away.